Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So I know we've been talking about bring your own vulnerable drivers or lull drivers quite a bit already. And this is one example that we wanted to make sure we covered because it's getting a lot of traction. So this is a tool called GMER. Uh, as you can see here, this is supposed to be a security tool to help remove rootkits. Um, ironically, it's being used by a lot of malware and rootkits now because it ships with a assigned vulnerable driver. And again, with that bring your own vulnerable driver attack, they can use it to kill protected processes like a rootkit, but also like an EDR or other security tool, or you can use it to suspend threads or do some other interesting things. So want to make sure that we covered that. Um, Got to love here, just have to make the little joke about a security tool and company that can't even use HTTPS on their website. Got HTTP here in the corner and their site's not secure. So I don't know how much I would have trusted them anyway as a security tool, but um, definitely it's something that attackers are using and weaponizing. So uh, the original blackout, as it was called, um, is leveraging this GMER driver to, again, black out your EDR antivirus or your other defensive evasions. Um, again, this will kill Microsoft's PPL protected process light processes, so things that are running in that little bit more secure mode. And it, it's really effective. Um, all they have to do is bring that driver here, load it, and then they can abuse some of the internal commands on there to, again, like this uh, tool natively should support is being able to kill a process like a rootkit. They can use that to kill some of these protected processes. So. Blackout here was the original POC. Um, there was another POC that came out last week, um, NIM Blackout, because somebody wanted to write it in NIM. I'm sure there'll be a Go Blackout or a Pi Blackout without too much time from now. And then also uh, this past week, Johnny Johnson um, and also a colleague of his, Nick Powers, put together this on, um, so it's also using blackout as well, but they are using a little different method here of uh, suspending the threads. So instead of killing the process outright, you can leave it running, but you can essentially kill the execution in that thread. Um, a little bit more of a stealthy covert tactic. So a um, little bit interesting if you want to read more about how he's doing it in the blog post, you can see that. We're going to take a look specifically at NIM blackout, and we're going to look at how it's working for, you know, killing a, you know, protected process. So in our case, we're going to show that killing, um, you know, Microsoft Defender. So I'm going to kind of jump ahead to the video. We'll play this here. We're just going to um, download and transfer over NIM blackout and the uh, GMER driver called blackout.sys here to the machine. And then we are going to launch NIM blackout with um, the command line to kill, uh, you know, Windows Defender. So that's MS uh, MP engine. Um, you can see here that it was killed. Um, all you have to do is keep this running. So as this, you know, process will restart again, if there's like a watchdog service to restart your EDR antivirus tool, um, as long as NIM blackout is running, it's going to keep killing that. Um, you can see it killed it at least twice here. Um, so again, it works, it's effective. Um, good news is that there are uh, several detection opportunities for this sort of threat. Uh, two in particular, I know we've talked a little bit about like bring your own vulnerable drivers. So obviously you can use IOCs to scan for, you know, the hashes of those drivers, see if you have any activity of those in the networks. Um, two other ways that you can look for this are some of the, um, you know, more interesting aspects of the, you know, commands that are being run here. So um, NIM blackout and blackout um, both are going to be installing this driver. Um, NIM blackout is also going to be um, installing itself as a service. So you can see this being created here for, as a service creation. Um, probably more interesting is looking at the driver itself. So, you know, once that service is installed, you can see um, here that blackout.sys is being installed. So this would be another good way of detecting um, this threat. Moving on, want to highlight um, a recent activity from a nation state actor in China. So this was pretty interesting and it's also, you know, very severe. Um, so if you read the uh, reports here, you're going to see that a Chinese based threat actor that Microsoft was tracking as Storm0558 um, was able to obtain access to emails from 25 organizations, including some large government organizations. And um, again, they did this through a very interesting compromise. Um, they had a you know stolen uh, MSA account 
and they were able to forge um, some access keys with that or access tokens, um, which they were then able to use to access um, those various inboxes in Office 365. So um, good news is, is that Microsoft has completed the mitigation of this for all customers. There really isn't any action that um, anyone would need to do. Um, you're going to see a little bit more of a technical blog post from um, MSRC, um, where again, they reemphasize that they completed the mitigation, no customer action is required. And um, if you have not been contacted, their investigations concluded that you have not been impacted. So this is not going to infect or impact most organizations, but um, there's still definitely a lot of concern of, you know, what happened? How did this happen? How could I, you know, hunt for this activity? How could I make sure that I am not going to be impacted by something like this down the road? And um, so CISA's uh, alert here, their advisory actually gives a little bit more interesting details because it was a federal um, government branch, so the FCEB, um, that was able to find this anomalous activity, which was then again reported to Microsoft. So the way that they were doing it is they were hunting and auditing um, their, you know, um, Microsoft 365 audit logs. And they saw, again, with these um, mail items accessed events, some suspicious or unexpected client app IDs or app IDs. Um, you'll see this behavior has been seen before, um, back for the solar winds um, threat a couple of years ago. Um, you'll see that that threat actor was doing something very similar at the end of the kill chain where they were able to, again, monitor and exfiltrate emails from various organizations. So you'll actually see um, Microsoft put together, and again, their Azure Sentinel repo has a lot of great um, detections and things you can use out of the box with um, Microsoft Defender, Microsoft Sentinel 365. So there's three here in particular I'm going to call attention to that we're working around OAuth apps. Um, we have them, you can look at these here, um, you know, within, you know, the repo, you can look at these in Snap Attack too. So like I said, these are going back to Solar Winds, but you can, you know, very easily see the use cases here. So this is looking for cloud app events. If you have that logged and, you know, taking a look at those. Um, again, they're looking for mail items accessed. They're specifically looking at that app client ID, like we mentioned in that CISA article. And then they do have a couple other um, items here. So they're looking specifically for um, accessing user email through the Graph API. This one would be a kind of a hunt query to see, give me all of those. Um, this one here is looking for anomalous activities. So you can see that this is going to have a time frame and say, tell me all of these app IDs that have you know hit recently in the last week that didn't hit in the prior week so this is one of those ways that again if we were thinking about this from you know the, the customer standpoint if you have a baseline and then you start to see these new app ids connecting this would be a really effective hunt query that you could you know look at and see if there's any sort of suspicious behaviors in there um, final one here is looking for reading email both directly and from the graph api so really the nuance here is that it's going to be using both the app ID and the app client ID. And again, you can see here some of those additional kind of, you know, there's a performance check, there's some other tweaks here, um, but this one would be looking at both of, you know, those techniques. So again, really effective if you wanted to see if you have any sort of suspicious, you know, app activity in your network. Um, again, you might find some anomalous behaviors that aren't even related to this threat, but it's something that you could, you know, still look for. So that's our threat snapshot for this week. It's a weekly series. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.